Have fun. Hello. Thank you so much, Lee. Um, it truly is an exciting time to be a GitLab customer. Um, and thank you so much for having Delta here to talk about our cloud native journey. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is frame our conversation today. The first thing I'm going to talk about is who we are at Delta Airlines. Then I'm going to talk about what sparked our cloud native journey. As I walk through that journey, I'm going to cover some of the key decisions that we made that allowed us to avoid the vendor lock and truly achieve workflow portability across multiple public clouds. Lastly, I'm going to cover what we now know. Um, we still have some work to do on our cloud journey, but I'm going to share with you some of our first key things we're going to complete in the next six months. So let's dive right in. So who are we at Delta? I'm pretty sure you all are familiar with us, but we, are recent, we recently became the top domestic airline in the United States, and we connect over 200 million people every single year to over 300 destinations in 50 countries. We're headquartered in Atlanta, where I am also from, and my, most of my team is based. And from Atlanta, we have the world's largest hub, with over 1,000 daily departures to over 225 destinations. That's a lot. So all of that connectivity is powered by 90,000 of the world's best employees. And I'm not just saying that because I'm one of them. We truly have an amazing culture that I've not yet experienced at any other company. So the travel landscape has shifted over the last 10 to 15 years. And at Delta, we've always focused on one thing in particular, and that's people. We've invested billions into those around the company, and because of that, we are seen as leaders in products, services, innovation, reliability, and customer experience. So I have a quick question for you. How many of you flew to New York to be here at the first ever GitLab commit? You didn't fly? Don't worry, I won't ask who you flew on, just if you did. Um, but I want you to think about how technology enabled your journey to get here today. So from checking in on an application, from printing your boarding pass, or even taking a look at you know, what the weather was in your destination, technology, technology truly is the backbone of the travel industry. So at Delta, we are focused on in not only enabling our customers with technology, but also enabling our employees so that we can make that customer experience even better. So that brings me to the next section of my talk. What sparked our cloud native journey? With technology being such a large part of the travel landscape these days, we had to really work towards getting, achieving adaptability and scalability with our infrastructure. So it all started in 2016 when we got a new CIO, Rahul Samat. Um, he's now the executive vice president of the company as well. But at that time, in 2016, we were solely focused on reliability and availability of our systems. So if you think about it, it doesn't really matter what capabilities or new features you introduce if the systems are not reliable. So that was our focus initially. But after we achieved the level of resilience and availability that we were looking for, we shifted to focus on digital transformation and how we can achieve that next level experience for our company. So this digital transformation focused on two things, our customer and employee enablement. And I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the efforts that we focused on during that digital transformation. And that should lead right into um, my, the next portion of my talk, which relates to cloud native. So in 2018, we started to look at all of the data that we had around Delta. Within Delta, there's different teams that do different things. And we all kind of like, you know, hoard our own data. So our first task was to bring that data together and create a single view of our Delta customer. So this single view of the customer allowed us to have information about everyone that flew Delta and what their likes and dislikes were. So as you can imagine, having that data and empowering our employees allowed us to target specific needs of our customer. When we introduced this, Everyone who flew Delta loved it. Imagine getting a personal note or a personal statement from a flight attendant that really, truly resonated with you as a customer. So we really had some very happy customers. Because of that next level experience, customer experience that we were able to develop based on that single view of the customer, 
we were able to achieve a really, really great rating and have gotten lots of awards because of it. Our company is doing better than we have ever have in the past, but as anyone in any market with a lot of large, powerful competitors will tell you, the reality of sustaining that competitive advantage for an extended amount of time is not likely anymore. You really have to keep moving forward or you'll be left behind. From my perspective, if it's if it's easy for us to make that customer experience more seamless, have more reliable systems, and make sure that our technology is the best of breed, I think we should just do it and keep moving forward. So this brings me to one all-encompassing topic that we're focused on enabling at Delta right now, business agility. So this statement, um, adaptive change in a productive and cost-effective way while incorporating quality is how Delta plans to react to our customer demands in the future, quickly in a cost-effective way while also incorporating quality. I believe that in some ways it can be very easy to react to your customers, but when you also consider the cost and maintaining a level of quality that you need, that's where you have the challenges. So at Delta, we thought cloud native this is how we're going to do this and achieve the business agility that we're looking for. So I have some words um, kind of highlighted in here. I'm not sure if you can see them, but the first thing I have highlighted is adaptive and productive. So some of you might see the correlation already of how these words might relate to business agility, but I'm going to make the connection for you now. So when you think about decomposing large, a large amount of components into more manageable pieces, a fundamental, a fundamental concept of cloud native, that allows you to achieve the scalability, the ad adaptation, and a productive workload. When you utilize cloud native to also lower the barrier of entry for your development community, that's where you get the cost savings because you're managing that infrastructure more effectively. Lastly, when you leverage powerful deployment methodologies such as Canary and Blue Green in conjunction with cloud native, you get the level of quality that you're looking for. So that's it, right? Business agility equals cloud native. So we, when, we, when we started on this journey, we thought, oh, this is good. We'll do cloud native, and then we'll get the business agility. But at Delta, because we have such large, complex systems and a very mission-critical environment, it was not that easy at all. So I'm going to now talk about what our journey looked like when we decided to implement Cloud Native to enable that business agility. When we first started, we wanted to take a look at our current environment and figure out what are some of the things that we can improve to make sure that we were being very um, reactive and we could provide our customer with whatever they needed. So the first thing that we did is try to figure out how can we reduce the wait time for getting these ideas from the ideation portion to delivery into production. So we embarked upon a journey and did some metrics-based process mapping. And from that exercise, we were able to see that the longest thing that we were waiting for with the delivery of value was infrastructure. So that led us to the next step. How can we reduce the infrastructure maintenance and labor in order to achieve true velocity and deliver value that much more quicker? Lastly, we wanted to achieve the flexible architecture that we wanted to get to in order to maintain or achieve scalability and reliability of our workloads. So these were our goals upon embarking, upon, upon embarking on our cloud native journey. And next, I'm going to talk about how we achieve these goal, goals through two big selection points. So there are two things that we had to decide when embarking upon our business agility um, journey and working towards becoming a cloud native company. The first thing that we had to decide was what tools would we use to become cloud native? And how can we make sure that these tools plug into all of the public cloud so that way we didn't have to be vendor locked into any one public cloud provider? So thankfully, my team is the tools team. So we have a lot of legacy tools that we were utilizing currently, such as Rational ClearCase and a homegrown release engineering tool that's creatively named Release Engineering Tool uh, at Delta. So we knew what was out there. So since we knew our landscape very well, we really just had to figure out, would these tools work with Cloud Native? The answer was a big fat no. 
So we had to look and see, okay, what do we need at a minimum, minimum MVP, really, to achieve cloud native? And our answer was version control, continuous integration, and continuous delivery. So we embarked upon our journey to select and evaluate tools out there that would help us get there. So upon, and within that journey of selecting the criteria, um, we came up with this acronym, AEIOU. And this is, these are the criteria that we looked at when we examined the individual pieces of our new tool chain. So the first thing that we thought about was applicability. How does this tool apply to the Delta environment? We are a very heavy Java and a very heavy Linux user. So we had to make sure that the tools that we picked were conducive to that environment that was out there, all of our development community was using. Next, we had to consider, was the tool enterprise ready? At Delta, we have a lot of criticality on technology, so we did it. As much as I love open source, we wanted to make sure that things were tried and true and mature enough for our environment. So we needed support and make sh to make sure that it, has, it had been tried and tested before. Next, we went to I, which is integration. So when you think about integration of your tool chain, you want to make sure that all the pieces work together so you can achieve what you're hoping to get. Thankfully, because we were starting from scratch, we didn't have to plug into any of our legacy tools. We just had to make sure that the new tools that we selected work together very well. Next, we went to O, which is overhead. So since our two team manages all of the tools at Delta from a development standpoint, we really had to think about overhead. How easy would it be, how easy would it be for us to manage these tools and administer them for 5,000 developers at Delta? So we looked at things such as documentation and an API so that we can automate a lot of the common, common, uh, common activities that we would have to complete from, from an administration standpoint. Lastly, we had to think about the usefulness of the tool. So with the usefulness, it might sound like applicability, but really what this means is you want to make sure that you're, build, you're implementing building blocks. There's no point, a, point in going for CI if you don't have version control yet. So we wanted to make sure that all the tools that we brought in were useful for us and came just in time. So with all of these factors that we considered for our tooling, we were able to make very purposeful selections for tools that plug into cloud native and that our developers could adopt. So we started off um, first selecting a very great tool um, with a very great partner vendor that you all might be familiar with. They're actually having their first user conference like right now. Um, so our first selection was none other than GitLab. And GitLab has been partnering with us um, ever since we started off our journey three years ago. And thank you so much for the team for doing this and being wonderful partners. We then selected Sona Type Nexus and we used Jenkins for CI. So all of the tools that we selected on a foundational basis were things that we had to have, but we're now actually looking at offering our developers a choice by also leveraging GitLab CI. So now we have our tools in place. We can now move on to our path selection. So with the tools that we had in place, we wanted to select a platform as a service that we could leverage to allow a, con a, a continuous, um, a continuous just front door for our development community. So the first thing that we looked at when selecting our platform as a service was the fact that it needed to be portable. So when you think about being multi-cloud and leveraging many of the different providers out there, you want to make sure that your platform can plug into each individual cloud. So that is something that we considered. The next thing that we looked at is, can this platform as a service support the Delta stack? We have a lot of middleware needs that are very specific, so we had to consider that to make sure that we were serving the same need that our legacy um, offerings had. Lastly, we looked at the support. Who can we call when this is down? So we needed to make sure that they had very, very good support, um, and we could absolutely make sure that it was available for our customers to use, and, and all the applications on it or still up and running. Um, so that's all I'm going to share about the platform as a service selection, because later today, myself and Chris Bolton from my team will have a talk um, at 1.15 that goes in-depth to our journey um, on selecting our platform as a service, which actually turned out to be Red Hat OpenShift. So be sure to join us this afternoon if you want to find out a little bit more about that. So with these two selections that we made, we were able to plug and play into any public cloud. 
So this is really the meat of my talk today. You, as a leader within your space, will have to make these two selections. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Helpful for you. So as I move past this, I want to quickly talk about some of the value that we've seen now that we are portable and we can work in really any public cloud space that we want to. The first thing that we've seen is customer value. So we were able to quickly and seamlessly provide value to our customer and also our internal employees. So I'm going to talk about two examples of that value. The first thing that we were able to achieve very recently is a seamless check-in process. So if you think about traveling internationally, um, either going east or west, you may actually check in with two of, of joint venture, venture partners. So for Delta, we partner with Air France, KLM, just to name a few. Previously, you had to check in individually on each carrier that you were going to um, travel on. So with the introduction of our platform as a service, we were able to create an API that allow you to check in one time and to make that seamless experience for our customer better. Next, for our employees, we provided some value on the front of decision support. So when there is an a weather event, um, we consider it an irregular operation or an IROP. We were able to implement decision support through, you, for le through leveraging machine learning that allowed our internal employees to make decisions as to what flights to cancel so that we are impacting the minimal amount of customers. So those are two examples of the value that we've provided by leveraging our new tools and platform as a services within our private and public cloud. Next, Next, a great value that we have now by leveraging being multi-cloud and not being tied to any one vendor is the ability to play the field. So we not only can leverage the best of breed features in the public cloud space, we also can pick and choose based on public cloud provider performance and cost. So with the cost savings, we've been able to do a lot, um, which is you know fund more great features. Um, or I'm thinking about doing something like Susan did here, which is, you know, Bring some, bring some champagne to work, but uh, whatever you decide to do with your cost savings, um, it's a great spot to be in when you can leverage multiple public clouds. Lastly, which is the greatest thing ever, is we've been able to create a first-class developer experience. I think the developers um, are very happy with what we have put in place at Delta, and we have the ability for them to leverage not only our on-prem op OpenShift private cloud, but also being able to scale into the public cloud, but having that continuity, and for them to be able to leverage the education that they already have and still be able to scale out. So what do we now know that we're here on our cloud native journey? We know that it's important to learn to leverage what? With being multi-cloud, you get a lot of options. But you need to make sure that you put into place governance to understand when to leverage which public cloud. And you can't just do it willy-nilly. So we are working at Delta to establish a governance model around that so we can leverage things when we need to um, and be purposeful about that. Next, we realize that developer experience is key. Because we have a large legacy environment, cloud native is earth shattering for us at Delta. So we are, wanting, we are wanting to build a path for our developer that provides continuity and education so that they can be successful in the multi-cloud space. So with that, um, this is the last slide. I wanted to leave you with this statement. Be you, be different, be great in cloud native. And what this means is that although I've talked a lot about Delta's journey, there is no one way to implement cloud native. This is just one way that we've done it. But build your own path. Make purposeful selections that allow you to achieve workflow portability. And I can't wait for you to share your story at the next GitLab commit. With that, thank you so much for the time today. Have a great conference. <laughs>